find a 95% confidence interval of the population mean using the given sample data. We have the data over here. And the confidence interval is built by finding the sample mean and then adding or subtracting the margin of error. So minus this margin of error is our lower limit to the confidence interval. And then x bar, the sample mean, plus the margin of error is the upper limit to the confidence interval. Now this margin of error can be found very quickly using Excel. So if we have all this data, we can go into Excel into Tools, Add-ins, make sure you have the Analysis Tool Pack add-in, and say OK, and then Tools, Data Analysis. We're going to use descriptive statistics. We say OK. Now, at this point, we are going to choose all of the input that we have, all of the data. So it, it's already chosen that for me because that's the only thing I have on the screen. If it doesn't choose it for you, of course, just choose it there. And then the rest of this is like a flight checklist. So we've got our data in columns. We don't have a label in the first row, so we don't check that on this one. Output range. I'm going to put it right on this sheet. And what I've done is I've chosen the cell, the upper left uh, corner of where I want the output to be. So I just click that, and I've chosen it twice there. There. I click that. Now, we want the summary statistics and the confidence interval. Confidence level for the mean is 95%. as as is given here. Sometimes it'll be 90% or 99% and adjust this accordingly. All right, we have all the stuff that we need here and I hit OK. Now, this is a little cryptic. The mean is not cryptic. That's the sample mean. That's X bar. So right now I can, I can say that is 25.8 is the sample mean minus the the uh, margin of error, and that is actually this number. It's not the standard error up here. This standard error is the, is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the uh, sample size. So it's, it's this one way down here, confidence level. So this is why I say this is a little cryptic. So you'll wanna, you might want to pause this and take notes. It's way down there. So we have this minus, uh, I'll put 2.1. And then 25.8 plus 2.1. So in the end, our confidence interval becomes 23.7 up to 27.9. So that was quick. If you've got the data, then it'll be really fast for you. What if you don't have the data? What if you only have X bar, just the sample mean, and little s, that is the sample standard deviation, and just the sample size. Sometimes you come across problems like this. Well, we have the sample mean, we have the sample standard deviation, so let's say you didn't have all of this data, but you, you have just what's uh, highlighted in yellow. I'm not going to, not this stuff down here, but just the mean and the standard deviation and the, the count. So, you can then use this to build uh, to build the confidence interval where the error equals this t value on the t distribution and you use the t distribution because you don't know the population standard deviation you just have the sample standard deviation multiplied by sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size okay the t let's build this t the T on Excel is the function T I N V. Let's write that a little bit better so you can see that. T I N V. And then it, it talks about probability. Well, what that is, is the um, 1 minus confidence level. So in our case, it's going to be 0 0.05. And I'm going to actually put in just 1 minus 0.95 because I want to drive it home that we can just follow this directly. So, and it's actually the, the probability of, of the sum of the tails and all that stuff. But, okay. Next is the n minus 1. And that's telling Excel what are the degrees of freedom, sometimes abbreviated DF. So, n minus 1. 
Okay, I'm going to type all of this in, this, this whole formula into Excel. And we should get the same error that, that we got because we're using the same, uh, the information from the same data. Now, it'll be a little bit off of that because I'm rounding here with the sample standard deviation and all that stuff. But let's see what we get. Equals TINV. This is going to give us our T value. Probability is 1 minus that confidence level. Comma, degrees of freedom. You could just type in 19 here. I know that's 20 minus 1. But I'm going to type in 20 minus 1 just to drive home the idea of what information actually goes in there. Sample size minus 1. Now I'm going to take that and I'm just going to right away multiply it by our sample standard deviation. That's our 4.5. Let's see, 4.53. I'll give it one more decimal place. Divided by square root of. SQRT. So I've divided by with the slash and then square root of the sample size. And that sample size is 20. Here we go. Cross your fingers. Hey, 2.1. It's a little bit off because I've rounded the standard deviation a little bit. But now we have the same data. And I'm, I'm not going to go through this again because we it would just be a, the exact same uh, formula there. But just to show how you can find that that margin of error if you only have the summary data, uh, not, not all of the data.